today is Dr. James Shirley. Welcome to Life Matters. Thank you, Colby. Dr. Shirley is the senior scientist at Boston Biomedical Research Institute, and he's been working on a lot of issues related to stem cells. Uh, Boston Biomedical Research Institute is researching um, various diseases and how various cell technologies can work to help them. So, Dr. Shirley, could you tell us first a little about your work? So, our work is uh, focused on problems in adult stem cell biology, and there are two main issues that are sort of limiting the progress that we think can be made there. One of them is that the cells are difficult to identify. It's difficult to know when you're looking at one. So which cells are difficult to identify? These are adult-derived adult stem cells. Adult stem cells. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we should start by def <coughs> defining adult versus embryonic stem cells. Okay. Um, the way to maybe best to think about uh, what's the difference is to sort of think about how we all start off as an embryo. Mm -hmm. And the embryonic stem cells are derived from embryos. Uh, and one of the things that we, we know is that in order to derive those cells, the embryos have to be destroyed. And that's been uh, a point of a lot of controversy in this work. Okay, so we can see on the screen the sources of human stem cells. Embryonic, normally uh, everybody started as an embryo. And then what else can you learn? And so first? what the slide shows is that that starting cell becomes a larger embryo, and eventually it, it develops into a human being, a full a fully developed human being into a person who's able to walk around. And so in adult tissues, there are stem cells there as well. So for each type of tissue, um, there are stem cells associated with it that we call adult stem cells. So for instance, in the brain and pancreas and So liver. across the bottom of the screen, we see all different kinds of adult stem cells. Everybody has adult stem cells. Where are you said in your brain, in your skin? Pretty much um, all of our mature tissues have uh, associated with them a specialized cell called an adult stem cell. Okay, so when you said mature tissues, we have a body hierarchy. That means so, cells. What so the way to, the, what this um, image illustrates is that although our bodies are made up of trillions of these round things we were depicted as our cells, those cells are organized into what we call tissues. And tissues, for example, would be skin. And in some cases, those tissues are organized to form organs like our heart or our liver. So there's a hierarchy from small to larger organizations. And you're saying almost every kind of tissue in the body has stem cells? Pretty much every type of tissue has yeah. stem cells. Hmm. So what's the difference when they talk about using stem cells to treat a disease? What's the difference between embryonic, embryo stem cells, and adult stem cells? Well, the idea of treating a disease with an adult stem cell basically means putting back into the tissue something that's already there. Mm -hmm. And one of the best examples of that is bone marrow transplantation, where the person has a difficulty making blood cells, but stem cells can help with that. And by providing them a source of blood stem cells, one can have a therapy that, in that manner. So for decades they've been doing bone marrow transplants, and that's actually a stem cell treatment? It's a stem cell-based therapy, yes. Adult stem cells? Yes. Now, have, how long have they been helping people, or have they been helping people with embryonic, embryo stem cells? Well, there haven't been any therapies with embryonic stem cells, and one of the things I hope we'll be able to talk about um, in the session together is not only why that's true, but why I, for one, don't think it ever will be true, that they'll be used specifically for treating ailments and diseases and injuries in adult immature tissues in children and, and adults. Okay, so an embryo, embryonic stem cell, first of all, can you define embryo? Ah, embryo is the very earliest form of an uh, organism. And okay. So human being, we all were embryos for how long? Uh, depending on how you start the counting, for as many as uh, 40 weeks before okay. birth. But um, the, the phase of embryonic versus fetal is sort of difficult to call, but a number of weeks for all embryos. So for several weeks you and I and everyone in the audience was an embryo and then what happens to get the stem cells from an embryo? So at an early stage of development what happens is the embryo is disrupted to get the stem cells out. What do you mean disrupted? It's killed. Killed. So that's why it's controversial to have embryonic stem cell research. So you're killing an embryo and what does that mean? Is it just a bunch of cells? Is it? Why is it so controversial to kill an embryo? Well, I mean, the controversy is because, and I like this about the mission statement for this show, is that human life is a continuum. Mm -hmm. 
and it starts with the initial moment when a human genome, a whole human genome is in the, what we call the cytoplasm, the mixture of the egg. One way to achieve that is by having sperm and egg fused together. And it's at that moment that the human, the complete human genome is activated. So the moment of conception as traditionally defined, um, you have all your DNA, you're just one cell, each of us was one cell, but we had our complete DNA ready to go. Exactly. Uh, matter of fact, if the FBI went to a crime scene and found DNA evidence, could they tell if it came from a one cell zygote or an oh, adult criminal? Oh, oh, or? Only, probably only in terms of how much DNA they would find. Okay. <laughs> so the actual DNA is there to show that there's a, an, a unique human being. Yeah. What else can you tell us, tell us is inside a, um, a cell besides DNA? Well, I think. The audience should appreciate the cells are complex, but that doesn't mean that they can't be understood. And this diagram here, uh, which has just come up, is just sort of a schematic of some of the important components. Cells have a membrane that holds everything inside. The big blue dot there is uh, the DNA. Uh, it's called the nucleus. It holds the DNA. And we'll talk about some of the new technology based on moving that nucleus around. And then there's also the energy source of the cell called the mitochondrion, which is present in cells, which is another so-called organelle. Organelles are the small organs that are in cells. So I noticed next to mitochondrion it says DNA and next to nucleus. In other words, there's two parts of the cell that have DNA. Um, what are they talking about when they use DNA for embryonic stem cells? So in the case for um, embryonic stem cells, especially we'll get to later in terms of talking about cloning, you're talking about the main human genome, which is the nuclear DNA. Mm -hmm. These uh, energy organelles called mitochondria have their own independent DNA, which couldn't encode for a person, but it can encode for factors that are produced in cells that cells need. So it's a different form of DNA. So there's DNA in two parts of the cell. I think that's part of the science to, yeah. to remember. Um, now, tell me about the difference between adult and embryonic stem cells in terms of how they develop. Mm -hmm. So I really want to emphasize this point with this slide that talks about what tissues are like in children and adults. And it's a feature of adult stem cells that's essential for how our bodies are maintained. And what's shown here are these white cells at the bottom here represent the adult stem cells. And there are two kinds of arrows coming from those cells. One is a straight arrow, which, and the other one is a curved arrow. So those arrows split because what the cell can do is it can divide, it can become two cells. In adult-derived stem cells, one of those cells is another adult stem cell, so it replaces itself. So on the bottom of the screen, there's the white cells, well, not white cells, but stem, adult stem cells represented by a white box. And the arrow going up shows it's turning into a specific kind of cell, say a skin cell. Exactly. And then the curved arrow shows one stem cell making another stem cell. Is that, um, it sounds like it splits into two different kind of cells, not two of the same. Right, and what's unique about adult stem cells is that one of those two different cells is another replacement adult stem cell. So what, what I hope the audience will appreciate is what this slide is meant to, to depict, this arrow means that our tissues, although they look stable, are constantly turning over. So we make new cells, those cells turn into functional cells in the liver or in the skin. They do their job for a period of time and then they die and they have to be continuously replaced. So if you're gonna cure uh, injury or a disease in an adult mature tissue, you need a cell like these white adult stem cells here that can not only make the differentiated cells, but remember how to make the tissue over and over again, not changing. So you said that every tissue in your body has stem cells in it, and they constantly make new stem cells and make that kind of tissue, say bone or right. red blood cells. So Thank you.